All right, so we're done with the course, and so now we are going to start working on the final review. In this presentation, we're going to look at order of operations and equations and inequalities in one variable. This is problems one through four of the final review. I recommend doing the final review before you start watching these videos. So the first thing we're going to look at is order of operations. Remember that for order of operations, we want to use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS. A couple things to note. If the negative is not inside the parentheses, the exponent is not acting on it, meaning that it will stay negative. Also note, multiplication and, divi and division must be done from left to right. So for example A, we have the absolute value of negative 4 plus 20 divided by 7 minus 2 times 3 minus 1. So to start off with, we want to simplify inside parentheses. I'm going to leave the absolute value alone for now. 7 minus 2 is 5, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Now recall when we did this, I also said absolute value falls under the category of exponents. So I'm going to go ahead and evaluate my absolute value. Remember, absolute value are those vertical bars around a number. What is the absolute value of a number? Remember that this is its distance from zero. And so when we calculate absolute value, we just remove the sign. So we get 4 plus 20 divided by 5 times 2. As I mentioned, we want to do multiplication and division from left to right. So my next step is going to be 20 divided by 5. We get 4 times 2. Next step is going to be to multiply. 4 times 2 is 8. And then we add and subtract, and we get 4 plus 8 is 12. All right, let's look at example B. This is another one that I said we want to pay special attention to. We have negative 1 squared minus 15 divided by 2 minus 7. So I'm going to start with my x with my parentheses. We get 2 minus 7 is negative 5. My next step is going to be my exponents. Note here the minus is not inside parentheses, so this is going to stay negative. 1 squared is 1. From there, we want to multiply and divide from left to right. So I'm going to divide negative 15 by negative 5, and we get plus 3. And then finally, we add negative 1 plus 3 is 2. All right, let's come up to example C. The first thing we want to do is simplify inside parentheses. Negative 3 cannot be simplified, so it doesn't actually fall under this step. We can add negative 4 plus 7, which will give me 3. We want to divide by 2 squared is 4 minus 3 is 1. 
All right, we want to do our exponent now. This one, note the negative is inside parentheses, so the exponent is acting on the negative. We get negative 3 squared is 9. Minus 3 divided by 1. We multiply and divide from left to right, so we're going to divide. 3 divided by 1 is 3. And then we do our additions and our subtractions. We get 9 minus 3 is 6. All right, last one. We want to start by simplifying inside parentheses and absolute values. So we get 4 minus the absolute value of negative 2. On the bottom, we get 2 minus 8 is negative 6. All right, let's go ahead and calculate our exponent steps. This includes the absolute value. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. On the bottom, we get 2 cubed is 8. That's 2 times 2 times 2. I'm also going to go ahead and change my minus a negative to a plus 6. All right, to finish this off, we get 4 minus 2 is 2, and 8 plus 6 is 14. We want to simplify the fraction, so we're going to divide by 2 to top and bottom, and we get 1 over 7. All right, that takes care of our order of operations. Next thing we're going to look at is solving equations. Our first step in solving equations is distribute to clear parentheses or rewrite each term with the LCD and cancel. We want to move all variables to one side and all constants to the other. And we want to divide by the coefficient. Okay, for A, we're going to start with distribution. We get 5x minus 20 plus 5x equals 20 minus 10x. I forgot to add in a step. Our next step should technically be simplify each side if possible. So I'm going to go ahead and combine my 5x's. On the left, we get 10x minus 20 equals 20 minus 10x. I want to move all my variables to one side and all my constants to the other, so I'm going to add 10x to both sides. I'm also going to add 20 to both sides. We move our variables to the left, we move our constants to the right. So if we do this, we get on the left 20x, my 20s cancel equals 40, and my 10x's cancel. We can go ahead and divide both sides by 20, and we get x equals 2. All right, let's try another one. Example B. Same procedure, we're going to go ahead and distribute, so we get 5x 
minus 15 minus 6x equals 30 minus 10x. Right, if we combine like terms on the left, 5x and negative 6x combine to give me minus x minus 15. We'll bring everything else down. We get 30 minus 10x on the right. I want to move all of my variables to the left. So I'm going to add 10x to both sides. And I want to get all of my constants to the right. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides. If we go ahead and combine our like terms now, we have negative x plus 10x is 9x. My 15s cancel. Equals 30 plus 15 is 45. And my 10x is cancel. We can then divide by 9. and we get x equals 5. Now, though it is not a required step on the final, re on the final exam, um, it is recommended that you check your answers. So let's go ahead and review what that entails. Remember, to check your answer, we want to plug into the original problem. We get 5 times 5 minus 3 minus 6 times 5 equals 10 times 3 minus 5. If we go ahead and simplify each side, we get 5 minus 3 is 2. We get 3 minus 5 is negative 2. We multiply, 5 times 2 is 10, minus 6 times 5 is 30, and 10 times negative 2 is negative 20. 10 minus 30, we subtract, keep the sign of the larger number, and we get negative 20 equals negative 20. It does check out. So our solution is, in fact, x equals 5. Okay, let's try some other ones. Let's go ahead and look at some ones that involve fractions. So remember our first step is to clear the fractions on these. So we want to find the LCD. For C, we want a number that is divisible by 2, 4, and 6. Our LCD is going to be 12. So the first fraction, we're going to go ahead and multiply by 3. I'm sorry. No, we're not. We're going to multiply by 6 to get to 12. The second fraction, we will multiply by 3. three-fourths to get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. And the last fraction, to get from 6 to 12, we multiply by 2. And remember that whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Okay, so now if we look at this, we have 6 over 12 x plus 3 over 12 equals 9 over 12 x minus 2 over 12. Now that our denominators are all the same, we can cancel them. And we just keep the tops. So we get 6x plus 3 equals 9x minus 2. Okay, we want to move all of our variables to one side and all of our constants to the other. 
Note, it does not matter which side you move these two as long as they are on opposite sides. So I'm going to move my 9x to the left. I'm going to move my 3 to the right. If you want to have positive coefficients, you can always go the other direction. So if we go ahead and look at this now, we get negative 3x. My 3's cancel. My 9x's cancel. And we are left with x equal, equals negative 5. We can divide by negative 3. And we get x equals 5 thirds. If you're going to check this, I recommend doing it using a calculator. Plugging in and just making sure that your left side and your right side are equal. All right, one more. Let's try D. We'll start off with our LCD. Numbers that are divisible, or the smallest number that is divisible by 3, 5, 5, and 3 is 15. The first fraction, we're going to multiply by 5 to the bottom and the top. The second fraction, we are going to multiply by 3. 1 -fifth x, we want to multiply by 3. And 1 -third, we want to multiply by 5. So we get 5 over 15 x minus 3 over 15 equals 3 over 15 x plus 5 over 15. We cancel our denominators. We are left with 5x minus 3 equals 3x plus 5. All right, let's go ahead and move our variables to the left. I'm going to subtract 3x. Move our constants to the right. I'm going to add 3. We get 2x. My 3's cancel. My 3x's cancel. Equals 8. Finally, divide by the coefficient and we get x equals 4. All right, that takes care of our solving linear equations. Next one we're going to look at is translating problems to an algebraic equation and one of the things to note on here that students mess up a lot on the final is they forget to solve. I know that all of the examples that we looked at um, in class, I did not emphasize the solving, but these ones we're going to look at some basic setups. And so we are going to require that we solve the equation. So some things to remember when you do this. Remember your reverse order phrases less than, subtracted from, and divided into. Remember that if you see these phrases, the order is reversed in your model from the way it is read in the sentence. Also, if you see a phrase that implies you want to add or subtract before you multiply, you want to use parentheses. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. A we have twice the difference of a number and 3 is equal to 8. So the first thing that I notice here is I have that phrase twice the difference. This implies I want to subtract first. 
I want to find the difference before I multiply by 2. So this is going to be one that we want parentheses. So we're going to have 2 times, open up your parentheses, the difference of a number and 3. Remember, difference means subtract, so this is going to be x minus 3. We have our equal sign is equal to 8. So this is my model. Now we want to go ahead and solve it. So we're going to distribute our 2. We get 2x minus 6 equals 8. I can add 6 to both sides. We get 2x equals 14. And then I can divide by 2. We get x equals 7. All right, example B, we have 8 less than the product of 3 and a number is 22. So less than is a reverse order phrase. So instead of having 8 minus, I want this to be something minus 8. That something is the product of 3 and a number. Product means multiply, so this is going to be 3x minus 8 is, that is my equal sign, 22. So here is my model. Now we want to go ahead and solve, so I'm going to add 8 to both sides to isolate my variable. We get 3x equals 30, and then divide by 3, we get x equals 10. Alright, last one. We have 4 times a number added to 8 is equivalent to the opposite of 4. So starting off, we have 4, that should say times. So we have 4x added to 8 is equivalent to, that is our equal sign, and now what is the opposite of 4? Well, opposite just means change the sign, so this is going to be negative 4. All right, we go ahead and this is our model. We go ahead and solve, so we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. We get 4x equals negative 12. And then divide by 4 to both sides, and we get x equals negative 3. Alright, so that takes care of our translations. The last one we want to look at in this presentation is solving inequalities. Okay, so we have, um, first thing to remember when we solve inequalities, if you multiply or divide by a negative, flip your inequality sign. Also, when we graph, use a parenthesis for a strict inequality, meaning strictly less than or strictly greater than, or a square bracket if it is an or equal to inequality if it has the line underneath. Now one thing to note, you will not be responsible for doing interval notation on this, so don't worry about it. 
Okay, so for a, let's go ahead and see what we can do. We're going to solve just like we did with our equations. So my first step is going to be distribute. We get 2x minus 10 plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 21. We combine our like terms. We get 2x minus 5 is still less than or equal to negative 21. We add 5 to both sides. We get 2x is less than or equal to negative 16. And if we divide by 2, we get x is less than or equal to negative 8. So I'm going to bring this over here. And let's see what our graph looks like. So remember with our graph, we want to start by identifying where our critical number is. So negative 8 is right here. We want all of the numbers less than negative 8. If your variable is on the left side of your inequality, you can follow the arrow. My arrow is pointing that way. So I'm going to shade to the left. The last thing I want to do is identify what happens at negative 8. Since this is an or equal to, I'm going to use a square bracket. Okay, and that's all we have to do for that one. As I said, no interval notation. All right, let's look at one more. B. We have negative 3 times 4x minus 6 is greater than negative 10x. We're going to distribute first. So we get negative 3 times 4x is negative 12x. And negative 3 times negative 6 is plus 18 bring everything else down. Now, me personally, when I graph inequalities, I always like my variable on the left so that I can follow my arrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 10x to the left. If I have my variables on the left, I want my constants on the right. So we get negative 2x, my 18's cancel, my 10x's cancel, and we are left with negative 18 on the right side. We go ahead and divide by negative 2, and we get x and 9. Note we are dividing by a negative, which means that we want to flip our inequality and make it x is less than 9. Okay, so again, we want to go ahead and graph this. So we're going to start off by identifying 9 on my number line. 9 is right here. My arrow on my inequality is pointing to the left. So we are going to shade to the left. This is a strict inequality. It doesn't have a line underneath it, which means I want to use a parenthesis. All right, that takes care of our graphing inequalities, and that also finishes off our linear equations and inequalities in one variable. So come back later, and we will look at 
our next presentation, which will be graphing or linear equations in two variables. For some of you, it's your favorite subject, but we'll get through it. Okay, 